today, I'll be presenting about a novel regulator of tumor antigenesis that I identified. So, solid tumors account for over 95% of all cancer-related deaths. Solid tumors require angiogenesis or the formation of new blood vessels to obtain key nutrients needed for their growth. Therefore, therapies targeting angiogenesis or the formation of blood vessels have come into fruition. Unfortunately, many of these therapeutics are faced with adverse side effects due to the non-specific targeting of both steady state and pathological blood vessels. So the big question in my field is, how can we exclusively target tumor associated or pathological blood vessels? In my search for an answer to this question, I looked deeper into the process of angiogenesis. I identified that a developmental transcription factor known as X variant 2 was reactivated during tumor antigenesis. Unfortunately, since X variant 2 is a transcription factor, targeting, targeting it therapeutically is extremely difficult with current technology. Therefore, in my initial correspondence with my current mentor, Dr. Choi, I suggested looking at downstream effector molecules of X variant 2 in order to identify a more, potent, a more viable target to prevent tumor antigenesis. That target is ETN, or ETV2 target N. In previous studies, ETM has only been studied in cancer cells where it regulates proliferation, migration, migration and invasion. The role of ETM in endothelial cells has not been previously characterized. Direct transcriptional regulation of ETM by X variant 2 raises an important question. Does ETM play a role in endothelial cell behavior and regulating to, uh, blood vessel formation surrounding solid tumors? So that, that was my purpose. Um, so I started off by analyzing the expression of multiple genes upon the depletion of ETM. And I noticed that genes critical to the endothelial cell migration, proliferation, adhesion, tube formation and morphogenesis, and cytoskeletal organization were impaired upon the depletion of ETM. This suggests that ETM may play a regulatory role of angiogenesis. I then analyzed previously published microarray data sets to identify abnormal ETM expression in known angiogenesis dependent disorders. So the, in disorders associated with excessive angiogenesis such as cancers, ovarian endometriosis, pulmonary hypertension, cystic fibrosis, and Parkinson's disease, ETM was grossly upregulated versus in disorders associated with impaired angiogenesis such as, such as Crohn's disease, ETM is grossly downregulated. This suggests that ETM is a positive regulator of pathological angiogenesis. Having established that, I sought to validate whether ETM regulates endothelial functions in vitro. I started off with endothelial cell proliferation. I noticed that the depletion of ETM resulted in a 20% decrease in overall endothelial cell proliferation, suggesting that ETM is essential for endothelial cell proliferation. I conducted a Boyden chamber migration assay to quantify endothelial cell migration. The depletion of ETM resulted in a threefold decrease in average number of cells that migrated to the underside of the membrane, suggesting that ETM plays an essential role in regulating migration. Next, uh, endothelial cell adhesion. The ability of endothelial cells to form spheroids is dependent on strong cell to cell adhesion. The depletion of ETM resulted in an impaired ability to form spheroids of defined shape and structure thereby suggesting that ETM is essential for endothelial cell to cell adhesion. I then conducted a sprout formation, in vitro sprout formation assay, and I noticed that the deletion of ETM resulted in, in an impaired ability of endothelial cells to form angiogenic sprouts. And lastly, I conducted a tube formation assay, where I noticed that the deletion of ETM resulted in, in, in an inability for endothelial cells to organize into vasculature in vitro. So together, impaired proliferation, migration, adhesion, sprout formation, and tube formation suggest that ETM is a regulator of angiogenesis. Now, to identify if ETM may be a potential target for tar uh, during tumor angiogenesis, I developed a novel in vitro tumor angiogenesis assay to bypass in vivo study. To do this, I co-cultured tumor spheroids and single cell endothelial cells and allowed the endothelial cells to organize into tube-like structures to supplement the solid tumor spheroid. I noticed that in the wild-type condition, endothelial cells were able to organize into tube-like structures towards the solid tumor spheroid, whereas upon the depletion of ETM, 
we see a complete lack of tube formation or endothelial cell organization. This image perfectly highlights the promise of targeting ETM. By targeting ETM, we can prevent the formation of blood vessels, prevent the flow of nutrients to the solid tumor, and stifle the growth of solid tumors. So in conclusion, this study has, is the first to identify ETM as a regulator of endothelial cell functions. More importantly, this study identified ETM as a potential target to prevent tumor angiogenesis surrounding solid tumors. So in the future, I hope to identify the role ETM plays in each of the other identified angiogenesis dependent disorders such as cystic fibrosis, pulmonary hypertension, and Crohn's disease. Uh, in the future, I hope that ETM-targeted gene therapy can provide relief to individuals affected by antigenesis-dependent disorders worldwide. Thank you.